what they go do with me now I'm still a talk of the town Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down We turn the smiles into frowns Gang hop out, then we clearing the crowd Get hot, then we'll take my clothes Like a shit, you got me in my zone up, y'all? It's your girl Brianna Imani, and you're tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview. And who do we got in the building today? We got your girl Lay Banks in the building. Y'all know who it is. Yes, we got Lay. Philly is in the building. Thank you for coming. How you feeling? How you feeling? Honestly, I'm feeling so good right now. Like, I'm happy to be here. I love coming out of New York. So, you know, it's yes. a vibe. Talk of the Town. Y'all know what it is. We already know what's up. So, you know, for the people that don't know, um, you don't know, YDK is going up right now. You for bodied sure. that. Thank it's you a, it's so a much. vibe. You made Thank sure you. you put the little hips in there, too. For sure, though, had to. You was in your bag with that one. Really, really like it. So, let's Thank just do, you. like, a quick little icebreaker. So, mm. give me your age, your favorite TV show, and a fun fact about you. Well, I'm 18. My favorite TV show right now is Umbrella um, <laughs> Umbrella, Umbrella Academy. Academy. It's so random, but like I really love that show. And what was the Are last you caught question? up? I'm almost finished. And don't don't spoil, don't spoil. Oh no, no, no. Okay. Don't spoil. All right, we'll I thought you was about later. to spoil for me. Okay, okay. okay. I'm okay. almost finished and I'm I'm getting to the good part. But All right, no spoiler alerts. And a fun fact about you. A fun fact about me. I love to sing. I sing all day. Like That is not a fun fact, girl. We already know that. I mean, okay, wait. I got a good one. I skateboard. Y'all oh. ain't know that. I know how to skateboard. You always know how to skateboard? I actually learned probably like two years ago, and I stuck to it because it's such a good exercise. So, Were you a Heelys girl? Yeah, I was a Heelys girl. I was a Heelys girl, to, too. You know. I feel like that was like the starter pack. It was. If you wasn't a cool girl if you didn't have Heelys. That's period. period. That's period. All right. <laughs> so let's get into early life. Let us know like how it was growing up. Did you, did you grow up in Philly? I did grow up in Philly. I okay, did. and how was that? What was that like? Um, growing up in Philly was rough, but you know, most cities in the tri-state is kind of rough. But I love my city, and I love where I'm from. It's the city of brotherly love. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But I couldn't say that I would want to be from anywhere else because I love being from Philly. But truthfully, Philly is a rough city, and you know, you know, pretty, but you come from the rough side. Okay. So, do you see yourself moving out of Philly at some point? I do see myself moving out of Philly. I want to move like ASAP, actually. <laughs> ASAP, you said? ASAP. Really? Where would you go? I'm trying to go like I'm trying to be in Cali. Like I'm a Cali. Cali, girl. really? I'm a Cali so girl. you will go across the country. What is it about Cali that that you like? You know, going out there like recording. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's such a vibe. Like the creative space just feels so good, and I feel okay. like I create better when I'm out there. Okay. You know what I'm saying. So when you were out there, that's when you decided that you wanted to go to Cali. Or yeah, like, and I've been to Cali a couple of times, and the other mm-hmm. times I went, I never really thought I wanted to live there until mm-hmm. this most recent time. I'm like, shit, this is where I'm supposed to be. See, I feel like I feel that way every time I go somewhere. <laughs> I'll be like, mm, I can see myself moving here, but that's dope. And I think that Cali is a good space, especially when you're in a creative space, like you said, for you mm-hmm. to like grow and. Build upon your career, so no, for sure. that's dope. So, what's your family life like? My family life is really good. I got real close knit relationships with my mom, my dad, um, my brothers, and my sisters. I got a lot of brothers and sisters. So, how you many? Know, I got eight siblings. What? All on my dad's side. It's wow. a lot of us. It's nine of us in total, but we all we all stay close and we all stay tight. Okay. You know, Are you the first. youngest, oldest? I'm actually dead smack in the middle. Like it's four above me and four under me. Oh, that's dope. So I'm the fifth child, yeah. Okay, I'm the oldest. I don't really know what it's like being the middle child, but I can imagine that's like interesting. So they all support you. They all they all do. All my siblings really support me. Okay, that's lit. And I know that you're Eritrean, which Mm -hmm. is interesting because you know I feel like we don't really have a lot of Eritrean representation out there. I know that there's like I think Ruby Rose is Eritrean. Ruby Rose. The weekend is also Eritrean too. And I know Nipsey was too. So there is some representation. Are you in tune with your culture? Culture. I'm very into my culture. Really? Like, all the way. Yeah. So, like, what are some things that, like, is unique to your culture that you feel like you still... I think some things that are unique is probably the dance moves. Um, I wanted to bring something back to light. It's like a little bit of this, yeah, a little bit of this action. Uh-huh. And I really wanted to bring that back to TikTok because I feel like people don't know that much about area culture. Mm-hmm. But also the food too. Like oh, the, the food, food is slapping, so good. Yeah. Like you gotta have Njada at least one time in your life. If you mm-hmm. haven't, you haven't lived, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that's just the truth. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Walk us through, like, you coming up. How did you get lit? Like, what was it that, like, solidified your spot? Um, well, I've been making music for three years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess the icebreaker for me was my song, Come On. Mm-hmm. And when I dropped that joint, like, and I did the pop yo shit. Twin, so, yeah. Like, that uh-huh. shit went crazy. Like, it really did. After that went crazy, like, everybody just was on my top about it. Just was like, yo, lay, like, you going hard right now. And then I dropped Boyfriend Number Two. Mm-hmm. And that was my first M by myself. Mm-hmm. And after that, I just been going up. Like. And you, you know what was interesting about Come On? I think that 
I don't know how many people were tapped into your music where you actually singing, mm-hmm. but I know that when that song dropped, a lot of people were surprised about your voice. They were. That was like a big thing in that. Like, no, it voice, really like was. everybody <laughs> was talking about that, but it was it was interesting to me because it's like there are so many singing songs mm-hmm. where your voice sounds melodic, and I, I just heard you with a studio mm-hmm. ball here singing. So it's like, no, my sis got some songs. But out you there know, it's crazy because I'm very versatile. It's just that people don't know that other side of me. Like, mm-hmm. and I got other records coming too, y'all. Like don't don't just be worried about the melodic shit because uh-huh. there's other stuff coming where I'm rapping. Speaking of other records coming, I have to ask you. I know you and P and B have a song that's yes. been in the works since like last year or something yes, like that. I know it. it's called Ticket. Yes. And I haven't seen it. <laughs> I saw a clip on Instagram, I think it was, but mm-hmm. like that was it. What's going on with that? Me and PNB gonna talk. Like, that's my guy. You know, he all thorough. He all vibes. And, mm. you know, hopefully we gonna shoot that vid soon and get it right out to y'all. Okay. Know, said. So you plan on dropping a song and a video at the same time? Yes. Yeah, song and video at the same time. What, so what's the thought or the reasoning, like, behind that? Not specifically for that song, but, like, do you think that it helps push a song when you drop it at the same time as a video? Honestly, I feel like it just gives a good visualization and mm-hmm. help people see where you at with it. And it just makes people understand the song better when you drop a video with it. Okay. I think it just is better. So, um, you know, of course, we know that you be around, like, the Philly Goats and all of Mm -hmm. them a lot. How did that collaboration start? How did y'all link up? How did y'all meet? Well, I used to be friends with somebody, and they introduced me into the Philly Goats, and then we started just dancing with each other in the same creator house, started making TikToks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's just pretty much how it happened. We all just linked up. I met somebody first, and somebody told somebody and you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying it just happened like that and then we start seeing each other at each other's shows mm-hmm. and it was like oh all right bet well let's let's link up and let's do this together mm-hmm. and that's just how it happened and you saying somebody is this like somebody who's no longer in the picture is this like a <laughs> you know no face no case like you no, don't want to show nobody just, out or? it's just somebody told somebody about somebody okay <laughs> all right i'm picking up what you putting down we won't get into that too much so walk me through like the whole blicking thing like how did that start how did y'all start doing that blicking it started, okay, it started with the shake that shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you got to bring it up here, and then you got to bring it over here, like this. <laughs> and then after you bring it over here, I'm dead serious. It's when it, start, it started theory. right here, then you bring it right here. Wop, uh-huh. wop. You got to bring it up here, and then you bring it to the hips. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> And then when it got to the hips, I feel like the hips really, like, is what everybody loved the most, but, uh-huh. you know. It, it went from shaking that shit to hips and now everybody just do both together it's two different dances right so do you cause okay so there's when I think about you um Blick it I think about this video where I saw it was like you were eating like the perk candy mm-hmm. and you was dancing at the I same time it up. Yeah. and you was fucking it up but I was like dude does it get tired or like did they tell you like all right you gonna take a bite and then you gonna start like see but this is the thing though like when I do promos and stuff like that like uh-huh. People got to understand that this is my job. I'm a creator. Like, I make music. I dance all day. That's what I do. That's my picture. So, mm-hmm. when he gave me the candy, I was like, well, this candy good as shit. I'm about to blick. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this candy good as shit. I'm about to blick for you. Like, uh-huh. I'm not about to sit here and talk to him. Like, oh, this candy so good. Shut right. down. Like, I mean, it's a part of your brand at this no, point. No, for sure. Like. And that's what it is. So, do people, like, come up to you asking you to do it? Is this something that's expected of you? Like, I ain't going to lie. I do be getting a couple supporters that come to me like, like, can you blick for me and i'll be like bro i'm not blicking in person like catching me on cam like, <laughs> that's what my tiktok is for but like. no i gotta be in a certain type of mood like sometimes you could catch me and i'll blick for you real quick but like uh-huh. it depends on how i'm feeling i feel like you need to put out a little tutorial or something like that no i you really, will. really be fucking it up and i, I feel really like will. people should just know how to do it i really will you got the hit I do not. <laughs> I won't even sit here and lie to you. Don't let her lie to you either. I do not. You know, I can do a little one too, but if you're looking a little crazy. Um, so It's okay. We're going to get you right. Okay. And I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> so stay tuned, y'all. So who would you say is the sturdiest? With, without you saying yourself, who would you say is the sturdiest? Who would I say is the sturdiest without mm-hmm. saying myself? I gotta say, PG Spence. Spence be fucking Ooh, it up. Ooh, okay, okay. Spence be fucking it up. Like he on, he be on some shit. Like wop, wop. <laughs> like he be on some. You shit. know what? It's the facials for me because they got real serious. serious. Like, <laughs> they got real serious real quick. So overall, though, how has it been? Like getting being out there, getting all the attention that you've been getting from people. Like, how does that feel um, to you? It feels good. Like I guess it's everything I ever prayed for. So. Mm. 
you know, seeing my supporters in person and seeing the effect that I got on these different kids and these different people. I love it. I love interacting with the kids mm-hmm. and I, I love my supporters, all of them. And like in that moment, I just be like, damn, like this is really my life. Like this is really people really be coming up to me for right. pictures and shit. Like, right. But, you know, I'm still I still be starstruck by my supporters. Like I be mm. starstruck by them like, oh, shit. And they be it's starstruck by me. <laughs> yeah. like, but, you know, it's, it's a blessing. So is this something that you like you always saw for yourself or is this something that you kind of like stumbled into it's something i always saw for myself i used to have sleepless nights praying about this shit like Mm. praying that god would deliver me peace and that i would find my way to Mm -hmm. my dream because this is all i ever wanted my whole life you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so So you've been singing your whole life i've been singing since i was three years old wow yeah before you could really put words together. Before I could really put words in my the first song Love I that. ever sung was to the left by Beyonce. Oh, that's so cute. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so are you a Beyonce fan? Die hard. I'm I love it. How did Beyonce. you feel about Renaissance? I loved it. Like I, I loved, loved it too. It. Like Alien, Alien, Alien Superstar. Superstar. Yes, yeah, she, she bodied that. Oh, um, and plastic, plastic off the sofa. sofa. Yes, yes, she yes. Did. And that then, song's so um, good. there was another one. It was the transition from um, Energy into Break My Soul. She bodied that. I don't know what you're talking about, but I feel she like I bodied, hear it. Li- listen again, because she really mm-hmm. bodied that. Like mm-hmm. I will play that, or maybe it was Cuff It into Energy into Break Cuff My Soul. It, I like Cuff It. I though. think that's what it I was. Like Cuff it. But Beyonce and Church Girl, Church Girl, nice. Church Girl don't hurt nobody. Yes, okay. So you, so right. you, you I'm tapped yeah, in. Like my girl B carried. She really, really did. So who else were you listening to like when you were um growing up? A lot of Michael Jackson, Aaliyah, um Bruno Mars. I was mm. a diehard like R and B fan. So mm-hmm. like I listened to a lot of Destiny's Child. Yes, and yes, just yes, stuff yes. like that. Like um or Tevin Campbell. Like but you old know school. about that? Can we talk? Can we talk oh. for a minute? Boy, I want to know your name. Can we talk for a minute? <laughs> it's the acapella for me got to you i got love to. it i love it so um do you feel like now with like social media and like you can like even with that clip you could post that right now and mm-hmm. it could get lit like do you feel like artists have it a little easier now with the help of social media like putting themselves out there i still feel like it'd be a little rough because mm-hmm. like you still got to put in the extra work like it's not a, just about posting like you got to mm-hmm. post and you got to be active and you got to engage with your supporters but some people do have it that easy to whereas though you just post and it just do what it do and i'm i wouldn't even say that that's me because i still be working hard i still be out here like right. with the culture and still be doing my shows and stuff like that right. so it's still a grind and hustle and i'm happy that you say that because my next question is like what have you done to like keep putting yourself out there like what kind of things have you done um i've done a lot of traveling a lot of interviews um some promotional shows mm-hmm. and just engaging with different artists and producers and locking it with new people in different cities to try to market myself in different ways you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying and you also have some cosigns because i remember seeing um gilly the kid mm-hmm. posted you yeah, definitely and that was like a song he posted and i was happy that he posted like a melodic i think it was like fly yeah, he posted fly and that was posted. and that was good because people in the comments were jacking you heavy so yeah, that also helps like when you get cosigns from mm-hmm. people did that help you at all no definitely shout out to gilly too like shout he, out to gilly. he was one of the first people to ever throw me up shout out to tiz 2152 mm-hmm. um they both threw me up and like ever since then i was popping in a, in a philly area and then when gilly threw me up it really got me lit like in the tri-state like right he was right on me like oh snaps like who this and like and then from there i just kept staying on the ground posting and just doing freestyles and stuff. right so who else if anybody like have you gotten cosigns from or even like recognition from that has like surprised you um i've gotten recognized by ruby rose um y'all know pnb um who else or like let's say like who who would you want to like who would i want to work get in tune with yeah Definitely Lil Baby, Coyla Ray, and Queen Naja. They my top three. Okay, you've had the list ready. They my top three right now. Okay. Like, I need I need them features. I could definitely see you and Coy. Actually, I could really see all of them. Right? Like, I, I feel like see we, all just, of them. we all just match each other, but especially my girl, Coy. Like, that's, Love her, yeah. That and that's why she was the first name that stuck out to me. I could definitely see you and Coy on happen. the track together. Um, But I do notice, I did notice, rather, that you don't really have that many features. Mm-hmm. Is that, like, for a reason? Is it? I mean, honestly, 
starting up and coming up as like an independent lady artist, mm-hmm. I feel as though I didn't want my brand to be a bunch of features. I wanted it to be like, oh, Lay Banks built this from the ground up. And mm-hmm. my team and me worked really hard. And I want people to understand that this is all organic. This is not from no feature. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? This is not from somebody giving me a handout because that's not what I want. Right. I appreciate that. You coming up and then, you know, you have time for the features once mm-hmm. people know who Lay Banks for sure. really is. So speaking of who Lay Banks really is, mm-hmm. and because you have a song called You Don't Know, <laughs> I want to play a little game with you okay. so that we can get to know you a little bit more. Okay. All right, so I'm going to ask you about 10 questions and okay. just answer as quickly as possible, okay? Got you. All right, what's your sign? A Gemini. Describe yourself in three words. Erratic, awesome, singer. Um, what's your go-to dance move? The hips. What was your first CD? First CD? Dora. D- 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 Dora. Not Dora. What, you had a Dora soundtrack? Yes, I really did. Um, I we? really did. Like, I had the Dora soundtrack. I really did. That's mad funny. Okay, what's a hairstyle that you never get again? Hairstyle <sighs> I never get again. Oh, my God, a high ponytail. Them joints hurt. Like Really? Like, a, like all of it up in a ponytail, like, with the like weave. I'm looking at the half up, half down you got now, and it looks good. Like, I, this you is said cute, it hurt. Because, like, the, the back it. is still relieved. But, uh-huh. like, having all of it and up. And all them bobby uh-uh, pins in your head. Yeah, pins it, just is, hurt it is a lot. Okay, so um, celebrity crush. Celebrity crush? Honestly, I don't got one. I think of myself. Mm, okay, you playing a role safe with that one. All right. <laughs> first initial of your first love. First initial of my first love, I. Um, what's the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to you? Oh, my God. I slipped and fell on a sub. Like the train. <laughs> the I slipped sun. and fell on a train and everybody looked at me and laughed. And I was so embarrassed. And the guy behind me was trying not to laugh. And he breached his hand out for me. It Wait, it's the fact that everybody laughed. Everybody and that's laughed how you know that that didn't happen in New York. Because I feel like if that happens in New York, you fall on the train, like, you might be like, mm. No, I But, like, we don't really be, like, really. laughing. No, they, like, they chuckled. Like, people looked at me and was like. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was the most embarrassing day ever. When was that? That was in Philly. When? When? That was recent? That was, like, two years ago. Oh, no, that was yes. that was recent. It was two years ago. Oh, God. All right. Uh, what's a fictional character that you would want to be besties with in real life? Um, Princess Tiana. Like, she just, oh, yeah, I that's love a good her. One. She's so good, so cute. Um, what's your strangest talent? And don't say skateboarding because we know about that one already. Strangest talent. Hmm. What's a strange talent I got? Oh, I could play the violin. Oh, that's nice. Random. Okay. What's something that you pretend to hate but actually love? I don't. I don't have one of them. Like I, when I hate something, I hate it. You I really hate it. Yeah. Like I ain't. Okay. Cause you know, like. Um, with that one, it's like, you know how some people be like, oh, you know, like, I don't really like going outside, but like, mm-hmm. I act like I like going outside because mm-hmm. like, I got to do it for my job. So you like going outside? I like going outside. Okay, for real. From time to time. From time to time. It depends on how I'm feeling. (laughs) Okay, okay, that's fair. If there was a movie about your life, what would it be called? This shit too real. (laughs) <laughs> this shit is too real Really? Yes. You feel like life came at you fast? My life happened so quickly Like I feel like everything in my life be feeling like a real movie Like this yeah. is a real life movie Like That's really how it would be Okay, okay And if you could create a holiday What holiday would it be? Banks Day And on that day so, yeah, I was You gotta cash say- a check at the bank Okay, you got to cash somebody, a check at the somebody bank. Somebody got to give you a check. Somebody you know has to give you a check, and you got to cash it at the bank. And it has to be at least $1,000. Oh, period. How at me on Banks Day. I like the sound. <laughs> I like the sound. <laughs> like, okay, okay, cool. So let's get into, like, you performing. So I know you performed at Met Philly, mm-hmm. and that crowd was Packed. crazy and they was finishing your lyrics like it, it really so really lit. looked that lit was like so crazy. how was that experience for you like seeing all of those people supporting you and popping out i wouldn't even lie to you it felt like a dream like at that time i was taking a break from social media mm-hmm. because you know it could be a lot and 
I really didn't expect myself to be ready for the show how I was ready but when I got on the stage my supporters just lit up and I'm like yo I love this crowd mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. and then I start yo they cut off the music I was so irritated I'm like you know what fuck it we doing it acapella and they had you I sung acapella and I started singing I'm like what's the lyrics y'all finish it oh, they, they finished everything you. they was on it like but it was so lit I love, I love that crowd. So what? So you said that you really weren't feeling it. Like you had just came off of like a social media hiatus. Mm. So what kind of things were you doing to get yourself like in a ready mindset to get up there on stage? Um, meditating, praying a lot. Um, I talked to God. So definitely listening to like calming music and mm -hmm. just talking to myself, trying to prepare myself mentally, make sure that I'm right up here. Because if you're not right mentally, don't do nothing. Mm -hmm. That's just how I got to be. Mm -hmm. And especially like... I'm really, I'm really a strong believer of like, if you're not right within yourself, it's, it's going to transfer into everything you do. So Definitely. you won't be able to fully apply yourself if you're not Definitely. applying yourself to yourself. I completely agree. So how do you, I know you said God praying, meditation. How do you make sure that your mental is at its best? Um, or I mean, how do you do that? I, Cause it's only but so much that you can, mm -hmm. that's within your control. But like, how do you do that? How do you maintain your mental health? I write a lot. Like, besides writing songs, I write to just talk to myself. Whenever I'm feeling something, I just put it in my book. And after I'm done, I go to sleep. Because mm -hmm. I feel like releasing all of that outside rather than talking to somebody and then somebody going to run their mouth about your business. Right. It's better to just let it out on a paper, wake up in the morning with a fresh mind, and let it go. Because mm -hmm. a new day, every day is a chance. Mm -hmm. And that's what I look at it like. I like that. You seem very positive and you like be positive. spiritual, mindful. I really, really like that. That's really dope. Thank you. Um, so I noticed that like lately it seems like you've been tapping into like your femininity a little mm -hmm. bit more, which is is really I mean, you're a beautiful girl. So Thank like you. it's it's really nice to see. Um what what caused that change? What inspired you to start tapping in? Honestly, I was always feminine within me. Like if you know me, then you know I was always a little like <laughs> but my friends coming around like I was always super tomboyish but I love being girly like I just like being pretty in the face and I'm, I'm gonna always love my little boy clothes like mm -hmm. it ain't nothing wrong with wearing I mean even when you had the shortcut you was yes the you was, was, was so yes it surely was, was you was doing the damn thing but I what made me specifically think of that was um I can't even think about what the name of the song was but I know it was like you and a dancer you had money and you had personal. on like a blue and white personal. jacket. Yeah, you talking about personal. And I was like, wow, the change from like the look new. there. Because you know they're two different people. Like they're two different personas. Like, so what are the two personas? You got Put this one, one and then you got the other one. And I don't even know what the other I, one's I mean, name I'm is. I like, because it was giving Beyonce and Sasha Fierce. Right, so, uh, Sasha Fierce, Beyonce, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so you have two different personas. So is there a difference when it comes to the music too with those two personas? Or is it just the look? I think it's just the look, really. The mm -hmm. music stay the same because deep within myself, I'm still who I am and that's never going to change. Right. And now with tapping into your femininity, you know, I noticed that, well, you're natural right now, but I noticed that you had makeup on like a mm -hmm. few days ago and I really didn't like what the girls was doing in the comments because they was doing a lot. Yes, they do too much. And I feel like, you know, as you're coming up, especially being 18, you know, mm -hmm. this is still an impressionable age where it's like comments sometimes can make or break you depending yeah. on what kind of person you are. Definitely. So how is it? Like, do you read comments for one? I read comments. I think everybody do. I don't know if everybody does. I don't know if everybody can handle it. I read it. comment. I can handle it. They don't bother me because I feel like growing up in a household with a bunch of brothers, my brothers then said everything to me that mm -hmm. people can you already, already say got that layer. Oh, you ugly. Oh, you look this and you look, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that's, that's about having tough skin. And when you come from a rough city like Philadelphia, mm -hmm. People's disrespectful all day. Like, you just got to know how to deal with that shit. And even beyond having tough skin, I think it also has to do with having that confidence. Because when you know you that bitch, there's nothing that anybody could say. No, for sure. Otherwise. Like, I'm going to always feel like I'm a bad bitch. Mm -hmm. Like, can't nobody make me feel like I'm not a bad bitch. Like, me without makeup, please, come on. Y'all bitches could never. It's given. <laughs> Y'all see it for yourselves. I mean, come on. So, um, so let's talk about, like, your dating life. I mean, I'm going to let you guide the conversation how you want and then you okay. know i'm gonna move accordingly what's the date in life looking like for lay banks lay banks is single so you know lay banks is single mm -hmm. okay single ready to mingle single you just focusing on the music what does that look like i mean i'm single focusing on the music for real like, okay i'm just trying to stick to myself i'm focused on what i gotta do mm -hmm. okay date a person from time to time okay 
um, date a person. So, like, what kind of people do you date? Um, when you're looking out there to date somebody, like, what if I'm type? looking to date? I'm looking for somebody that got their head on their shoulders, somebody that's not about to waste my time because I'm in a point and period of time in my life where I got things to do. And I don't know if y'all know that song where Drake be like, I cannot convince you that I love you for a living. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't convince nobody that I love him for a living because I got too much to do. So right. I just, that's just how I feel. Dating is like, it's dating, but it's not no necessity for me. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I have to ask you because last time D30 was here, mm-hmm. He came with a couple of the Philly goats Uh and, you know, I kind of threw in a little questionnaire about you and Brill Mm -hmm. because he posted it on his Instagram. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, girl, the whole room went silent, I just didn't know how to navigate in that situation. I said, when I speak to Lay myself, Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask her. Mm -hmm. So what's going on with you and Brill? What's the tea? We not a thing. Not a thing anymore? Not a thing, period. I'm cool off him. Now, Lay. We not a thing. I'm not. I'm not pressing that because you said what you said. <laughs> but I know you know like why everybody's curious because y'all got videos together. Mm-hmm. You know you got the YouTube videos. Y'all did the truth or drink when y'all mm-hmm. revealed. Okay, to- well honestly, me and Bro dealt with each other, but mm-hmm. you know things happen. It is what it is. So, but y'all still cool. We cool. So how is that? Because personally, I feel like if I fuck with a nigga. If we stop fucking with each other, you I don't stop. think that we could be friends after that. No, I feel that. But is that, like, one of those things where it's, like, you know, people like to see y'all together, so it's more, like, right. Or is it, like, y'all just it's not even business because we just, we, we used to deal with each other, so it's not even about business no more. Like, it was a point in time where it was a rumor going around just for entertainment and yada, 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 mm-hmm. this, that, and the third, but that's where it's at, and we're going to leave it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So how do you feel about like seeing the um edit pages on TikTok? And this is not even specifically about him. We said we was gonna leave it where it's at, so yeah. don't think I'm going back no, to him. I know. But you know, like I feel like people on TikTok specifically, they'll take like any little moment from a live, they'll take anything from a YouTube, I mean Instagram, and they'll like try to put it together. Is that weird to you? I don't think is it's it? weird because you know, me and Bro both have supporters and then I got supporters mm-hmm. and I feel like the Philly Goats got supporters. So if they post us, then they post us. It is what it is. Do you feel like, how does it make you feel to know that like everything you post is being watched though? Because I feel like you could slip up and it make pick me your feel nose in a live and now it's on an edit page. But you know, me being a person I am, I'm super blunt. Like, I don't care to pick my nose. Like, that's not, that's a regular thing. Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, so, I don't care. But I'm just yeah, saying like, as an example. Like, but you know. I, know what, I know what you mean. Like, I just be feeling cautious. Like, I got to watch what I say at all times. Like, I can't say nothing bad because... Mm-hmm. Y'all going screen record me and start talking crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so do you feel like t- uh, um, speaking on the topic of talking back? Because we were talking about earlier, like TikTok taking everything down. You know, you close to your mill. We don't want your page to go anywhere. No, definitely. Are you cautious about the things that you post on social media as I'm well? Very, very cautious. You got to be because TikTok be quick to being you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like what do you decide to post? On TikTok versus what you keep in the drafts. Because I know we all got a whole bunch of drafts. I know you probably got a whole bunch of drafts. I just be bent in the drafts. Like, sometimes I'll record a TikTok talking to myself. And I'll be like, this is not getting posted. Like, Uh this is not going up. But the dancing stuff, like, sometimes I'll post dancing TikToks. Sometimes I'll post talking TikToks. Like, Mm -hmm. it depends on how I'm feeling, honestly. Like, if I think the video cute or funny, I'm going to post it. If not, Mm -hmm. it's just going to stay in the drafts. And so, since you started, like, getting more attention, has anybody from, like... I mean, you 18, but, like, anybody that you fell off with, not even dating-wise, but, like, friends, anybody try to, like, come back into the picture? Not oh, hell yeah, definitely. Yeah? All the time. And how does that, like, are you open to that? Like, how does that? No, you could stay over there. I'm cool love they anybody. Just, mm-hmm. Anybody that wasn't in my life before I had this, whatever I got going on, you could stay right where you at. But you want to know something, mm-hmm. Lay? Because I'm quick to call somebody out on what they post. You posted something that was, like, I don't. I don't go to, I don't get new people. Like, I spin back to my old ones. You said when something say like that. that. Hold on. That? Yes, you did. Because I feel like I wrote it down somewhere. When I don't I get that? new vibes. I go back to my old ones is what you said. See, but 
by new vibes. Uh-uh, don't by even new do vibes. that. Don't even no, do that. by new vibes. I mean, I you personally, I'm so at peace that like I feel like it's offensive to me to let any of my. But you know what's crazy though? I again. tweeted that in a point in my life where I wanted to spin the block. Like I'm not mm-hmm. trying to spin the block for nobody right now. Like That's I'm in, Ole. I'm in a peace, in a peaceful place. I'm getting money. Like I just, I don't need none of that extra. And that's what would kind of concern me, too, about, like, going back to somebody that I used to fuck with. Because I don't know where the intention is. Like, what if we stop fucking with each other, like, for a reason, but now you try to clean it up just because, like, you see that I'm up now. Because, shit, everybody could be an opportunist. So you really can't put that past anybody. No, for sure. But thanks for clearing that up, sis. Got to. So let me know what's going on. Are you signed? Like, what's the situation there? I got a deal on the table. You got a deal on the table. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a deal's on the table, but I know at one point you were the first lady of a situation. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you want to get into details, but what happened with that? Um, honestly, no bad blood with them. The deal just wasn't going how I wanted it to go. Mm-hmm. And you know, sometimes when things aren't working out how you need them to for your career, you gotta let them go. So mm-hmm. had to let it go. So what were some things that you've learned? Um, I mean, building off of that situation, but like about the industry in general that you are now like taking with you when it comes to making these business moves and decisions. Honestly, you got to think about everything. Mm -hmm. Like you got to be smart about every move. Every step you take got to be strategy. You can't just do shit because like in this industry, it's like you say the wrong thing. You move the wrong way. You spend the wrong money. Like anything go wrong. And you just got to think about every move that you take. And that's really the main thing that I feel like I learned. And not everybody is your fucking friend. That goes for any yeah. anybody out there watching. Not anybody. You know? Not everybody's your friend. Like even outside of the music industry, if you a random person, not mm-hmm. even if you're just an artist, like these people do not be your friends. Stay away from them. And sometimes it be the ones you least expect to. Exactly. Okay, so um, let me know, like, or let us know rather, like, what's your team like? So you have the deal on the table now, but I know you moving with a team. At mm-hmm. least I think. So what's your team looking like for what it is right now? I got my manager Kenny Blake. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm working with a JV with Jalil Beats and oh, 88 Jalil Banks. Beats, yeah. me. And that's my team backing me right now. We, okay. we a strong team. We pretty tight. We stay cool. Everything be moving sturdy. So, you know. That's dope. That's dope. So, like, is there anything else outside of, like, the music and the dancing that you can see yourself doing? Acting. I really want to get into the acting world. I want to get into the cosmetic world. Like, I want to sell makeup and Ooh. clothes and stuff like that. Lip okay. gloss, definitely. I'm surprised that you didn't say something like hair. Like, not that makeup and clothes is a bad thing, mm-hmm. but, like, hair. Because you always switching up your hair style. I know. I really am. Like, that's I'm actually. I actually want to sell oil. Like, hair oil. Hair mm. growth oil. Because my hair... It grows a lot, and everybody always be asking me what I put in it, but yeah. it's just like a natural oil my mom make me. Ooh. But I was thinking, like, damn, what if I sell this? Because I think y'all would like it. I think that that would be shit. Anybody is selling anything these days. No, and we sure. know, especially if you're on TikTok, you know what's going on with the pink sauce sure. and all that. Like, they really selling anything. So I think that something like that, I mean, we see it. You have your natural hair out all the time. Mm-hmm. That naturally makes sense. So if you were to get into the acting space, though, like, what kind of stuff would you want to do? Is this, like, movies, TV shows? I would do both. Okay. Honestly, both. I would love to do movies, but I feel like a TV show, like, I would do a reality TV show. That was going to be my next question. Would um, you do a reality yes. show? Hell you would? Yeah, yes. What kind of reality show would you do? You know what's crazy? I was talking to um somebody this morning about like reality TV and they asked me would I ever go on Bad Girls Club and I'm like, fuck no. Like Okay. I was I was looking like Okay, like, so never, like you watch Baddie So? Yes, I do. Okay. That's my Love job. my girl Krishan. I down. just started it. Like Oh, you just start I just old girl. Started, you got a I whole love lot to like, shout out to her. Yes, like, definitely love my girl Krishan down. So you wouldn't do baddies, but what kind of reality show? Like if you had to compare I would it to do my own. Like like Kim what is it? Um the Kardashians. Okay. Like, so just about like your life. life. Like a yeah. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Would you do like a for the love of lay type of thing? For the love of lay, what's that? Like a like a dating show. I, um, no. Okay. Only because, like, I just feel like, <laughs> I just feel like dating online is just not it. Like, mm. that's why you would do it in person on the yeah. show. I'm cool. You're not jacking it. No, I mean, I wouldn't do it either. I just wanted to see what you was going to yeah. say. So, what can we look forward to, like, coming from you, Lay? Like, what do you have in the works? Well, I got two music videos about to come out, and then. I got another song after that coming out. And then 
I have a project coming up. Ooh, okay, that girl working. So, so that's know, all for this year? Yes, this is all this year. This is all coming. Oh, all of nice, it. nice, nice. So is there anything else that you want the people to look out for? Anything else that you want to say before we wrap it up? Honestly, tap into you on Olay Banks. Tap into boyfriend number two if you haven't already. Keep tapping in with me. Follow me on Instagram at Lay Banks. Follow me on TikTok at The Lay Banks. And I love y'all. I appreciate all of y'all for watching this. Shout out to Talk of the Town for having me. Thank you. Thank you for coming again. <laughs> See y'all. Peace.